January 24th, 1966, Air India Flight 101 Kanchenjunga was flying from Bombay to New York with a stop in Geneva with 106 passengers and 11 crew members. Among them was Dr. Homi Jahagi Baba, the father of India's nuclear program. Not just a scientist, but a visionary whose work would shape the future of India's atomic energy. Baba had founded the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR, in 1945 and later the famous Bhaba Atomic Research Center BARC. His dream to make India a world leader in nuclear science and not dependent on the West. In the era of Cold War, China had just tested its first atomic bomb in 1964. India was under immense pressure and Bhaba was negotiating India's position in this dangerous nuclear race. He was traveling to Vienna to represent India's peaceful nuclear energy plans. But as the plane flew over the Alps, something went terribly wrong. It crashed into the tallest peak in the Alps, the Mont Blanc, killing all 117 people on board, including Baba. The official cause? It was said pilot error. But rumors soon started spreading. Could it have been something more? A conspiracy? to eliminate one of the most influential nuclear voices of the time. In 1970, a CIA memo surfaced, revealing US officials viewed Bhava as a growing threat to their interest, especially in India's nuclear ambitions. Some researchers believe this death delayed India's nuclear weapons program by nearly a decade. Bhava once said, when nuclear energy is harnessed properly, it can transform the destiny of a nation. His vision of India as a nuclear power was left incomplete. His death was not just a tragedy. It was a strategic blow to India's future. Was Baba's death an accident? Or it was a targeted strike to stop India's nuclear ambitions? Fast forward to 1994. ISRO scientist Nambi Narayan, who was leading India's cryogenic rocket engine project, was suddenly accused of espionage. He was arrested, tortured, and humiliated. Years later, India's Supreme Court declared him innocent, but the damage was already done. India's cryogenic program was also deeply delayed by almost a decade, while foreign competitors surged ahead. Then came the 2009 to 2014 cluster of mysterious deaths. And in 2025, another shock, the mysterious death of Dr. Subanna Ayappan, who was a Padma Shri awardee and a former Director General of ICAR. He went missing on May 7th and his body was found in Kaveri River on May 10th. But Ayappan's case was not isolated. Between 2009 and 2013, official records show that 11 nuclear scientists and research fellows under the Department of Atomic Energy died unnatural deaths. Seven were labelled suicides, one was classified as a murder and rest were accidents such as fire or droning. Looking at a wider period, from 1995 to 2015, at least 71 suicides among DAE scientists and employees were officially recorded. Along with two confirmed murders, where families often considered the suicide rulings, asking how young and healthy scientists with bright futures could end up dead without warning. Some cases stand out. In 2010, a senior scientist is found dead in a lab fire at BARC. In 2011, a Kaiga nuclear scientist Loknathan Mahalingam is found floating in the Kali River. The official cause mentioned was droning. In 2013, two bar scientists, both working on India's nuclear submarine program, are found dead on railway tracks. Circumstances are of course unexplained. In 2014, ISRO scientist S.C. Surya Narayan is discovered hanging in his quarters. There was no note and of course no explanation. The relatives of several deceased scientists refused to accept suicide verdicts. One widow asked, My husband loved his work. Why would he leave everything unfinished? In total, more than 20 scientists linked to strategic programs died mysteriously in just a few years. Some were called suicides, some were labelled accidents. But many families and colleagues felt that it was a deliberate sabotage. Was it a coincidence or a silent war? What if I tell you that the scientists are the protectors of our nation's future. But who is protecting them? In many countries, being a scientist is considered to be a work of prestige. There are labs, 
grants, fundings, and of course you are recognized and respected. But in India, it happens very frequently that scientists are busy fighting the system itself. Imagine working for years on a breakthrough project, then watching your grant getting rejected or delayed. Imagine waiting for months for a stipend or just for buying your chemicals from your own savings, while our counterparts in the US, Japan, Germany, China are working in world-class labs. For instance, Germany, there are grants up to 1 million euros for research. In the US, every year, like in 2020, they spent on R&D 580 billion dollars alone. In Japan, they invested 130 billion dollars every single year. But India, barely 0.7% of its entire GDP. We have brilliant minds, but we don't give them the tools they need. We have unmet potential, but we don't give them the support they deserve. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai once said, we must be second to none in applying advanced technologies to the real problem of the man and the society. And yet, many of our minds are stuck, not in the lab, but in the waiting room of bureaucracy. If we don't support them today, will India's next Bahaba or Sarabhai even stay in India tomorrow? India produces some of the brightest minds in the world. Thousands enter colleges like ISC Bangalore, IZERTS, IITs and NIZER every year. But after that, many of them leave. Why? Because India's research system is not supporting them the way other countries do. For instance, in India, the PhD stipend varies from 37 to 42,000 rupees per month. Whereas in US, the same PhD stipend is $30,000 to $40,000 per year, amounting to 25 to 30 lakh rupees per year. In Germany, we have 2,000 to 2,500 euros per month, which again is more than 2 lakh rupees in Indian currency every single month. So there is no surprise that about 60% of Indian PhD graduates end up settling abroad. Meanwhile, China launched a reverse brain drain policy in the 2000s, offering incentives, labs and salaries to bring back its best minds. Thousands ended up returning, fueling China's rise in artificial intelligence, biotechnology and space. But what about India? We are still watching its brightest people leaving outside. Nobel laureate Venkat Raman Ramakrishnan studied here but built his career abroad. Same is the case for countless other people. Why are we losing our brightest minds? Should India treat its scientific strength as national security? But despite all these challenges, many scientists don't give up. Across India, young minds are still dreaming big. They may not have the best labs, but they have the determination to make a difference. For instance, in 2013, ISRO's Mars Orbiter mission reached Mars on the very first attempt at just a fraction of NASA's cost. Similarly, in 1970s, the Green Revolution by MS Swaminathan turned India from a food deficient country to food surplus nation. In 2020, Indian scientists developed co-vaccine and mass-produced Covishield vaccines, saving millions of lives during the pandemic. We at Sciastra mentor aspiring scientists, connecting them with experienced researchers across the world the next generation who refuses to give up. India does not lack brilliance. What we lack is respect. Respect for those who choose science over status, discovery over degrees, and service over salary. What if someone wants to serve their nation, not with a scalpel or an offer letter, but with knowledge? What if someone wants to create a vaccine, launch a satellite, build a defense system, or even go to space like Shubhanshu Shukla. Their path is research, and their uniform is the lab coat. Yet, while we cheer for every other cricketer and idolize every celebrity, why do we forget our scientists who quietly safeguard our future? That will be my question. We forgot Dr. Gagandeep Kang, who is India's vaccine pioneer, who made sure our children survived epidemics. We forget Dr. Somya Swaminathan, who guided the world's health policy as the chief scientist at World Health Organization. Why do we forget Ritu Karidhal, the rocket woman of India, who helped steer our spacecraft to Mars? Why do we forget Tessie Thomas, the missile woman who gave India its own Agni 5? Their work is not abstract. It lives with us every single day. When a cyclone is predicted and thousands of lives are saved because satellites tracked its path, 
that is isro when cancer patients in india receive affordable treatment through nuclear medicine that is barc when our air force flies tejas jets and when our soldiers are protected by agni missiles or brahmos systems that are even used in operations in dur that is drdo and when india became the first nation to land on the moon south pole with chandrayaan 3 it was because of the scientist who worked not for applause but for the future they may not fire weapons but they build the systems that protect those who do they may never stand on a podium but they hold up the whole nation and still they never refuse to serve they always do not for salary but for the country and this is why research matters because without it there is no oxygen in your icu no medicine for your child no cyclone warning for your village no gps on your phone no vaccine in a pandemic no rockets no ai no mars mission no missiles and without research there is no progress if the border has no soldiers what happens the country collapses but if the labs have no scientist the country never rises a bullet may protect a border but a vaccine protects a billion people every soldier needs a weapon and every weapon needs a scientist so don't just salute the uniform salute the lab coat too this is for every scientist who stays up all night to run experiments no one will ever hear about for every indian who believes our future lies not in the marks but in minds because if india has to rise it must rise on knowledge so this is not just a story about education it's a story about respect about sacrifice about the science that keeps india alive dr apj abdul kalam even once said dreams are not what you see in the sleep dreams are those that don't let you see if this moved you even a bit if you believe in science beyond scores in labs over loopholes in knowledge over neglect then don't walk alone join india's biggest science community siestra where students dreamers researchers and rebels come together to rebuild the future not with competition but with curiosity collaboration and courage the telegram link is in the description below you can join the community and let this be the generation that stops chasing marks and starts chasing meaning let this be the start of something greater jai hind